Why, well, hello, and thank you for joining us. We're going to look at eBridge offering by Champion Solutions Group today. So what exactly is eBridge? Well, let's take a look. eBridge aims to augment your ServiceNow platform investment. We do this by a couple ways. These are some key features from our customers. Lowering the cost of deployment and maintaining it, getting over some limited functionality issues, getting away from proprietary integration paths, and getting over some of the difficult to use aspects of the ServiceNow platform. So let's take a look at some of these real quick. So for lower cost of deployment, we have asset discovery, orchestration, and event management. So one of the key features of ServiceNow, besides incident response tracking, is creating a CMDB, populating that with information that you require to do workflows, and keeping that change management system up to date. The current process that comes with ServiceNow does a good job of it from the mid-server. However, the ingestion of all this different data can be cost prohibitive for medium and large organizations just because of how you're charged for a monthly scenario. And also some of the data is limited. Orchestration allows you to run various workflows from the ServiceNow platform, which is very powerful. But again, it comes with a cost from an initial setup to everything that you orchestrate can become a monthly fee. Again, making some of your end goals cost prohibitive. The new feature at of service now, which is very interesting, is event management. So in the security conscious world that we live in today, being able to take all the different information in your organization from your different enterprise tools that you have, like a SIM, an IDS, all these tools from a security perspective, bringing them into service now and being able to leverage that from an event management standpoint is extremely powerful. But again, it is very costly to do so. In the limited functionality scenario, what we're kind of talking about here is what I just mentioned, is that you're limited by the vendor developments and their integration into ServiceNow. Some developers and some vendors have integrations in ServiceNow and some do not. And what we've discovered is even vendors that do have it, they're usually only unidirectional. They're not a bi-directional data feed from ServiceNow back to the application. And this, of course, makes the data correlation very limited simply because each vendor implements it a different way. So then we get into proprietary integration, where a lot of our customers basically spend time having developers create methods of integrations. And of course, this can lead into management headaches down the road because none of them do it the same way. And this is not just us. This is from years of doing this. This is what our customers tell us the problem is when they're trying to implement their service now environment. So let's take a look at what this might look like to anyone. We're going to take an example and just a handful of enterprise products. So up here, something like Big Fix, Extra Hop, Q Radar. You can modify these for your environment. So this could be Splunk. This could be SolarWinds. This could be SCOM. This could be Altiris. All these different applications. But the concept is the same. And we're only choosing a few to start with here. So from all of these, we have a plane of glass. And we're paying operators to sit there to manage these tools and to look inside of them. So right away, we can see that our application sprawl starts to get pretty big in an enterprise world. And actually, I noticed they're missing one here on this slide. So let's draw it in here real quick. And of course, you're going to have some type of LDAP. Now, normally, this is going to be Microsoft's Active Directory. Um, so we can get our information into the CMDB about our users and other aspects. Um, but we'll draw that in there here. So again, as I mentioned, some of these have integrations into ServiceNow. They could be leveraging the mid-server, but not all the applications will have an integration into ServiceNow. And the data that they're retrieving, again, as we said, is very limited. And what that ends up happening to us is that, uh, let's draw our LDAP integration there. What that ends up happening is we still have problems, even with people running ServiceNow for a while. They're still wondering where their source of truth is. The CMDB and ServiceNow should be the source of truth, but if it's cost prohibitive to me getting the data in there or the vendor's not giving me all the data that I want or doesn't have an integration, I'm simply not getting out of my ServiceNow platform, which is costly, what I really desire to do. So at the end of the day, this becomes a nightmare mess and it becomes more of a management issue than anything else. And it's certainly not a frictionless environment. And that's what we're hoping to solve is to make something that's easy to work with, with low drag, creating a frictionless setup into your CMDB. 
So let's redraw this by putting in our E bridge into the equation, see if we can make this picture a little better. So from here, the E bridge is then going to have what we call girders. Now, these are going to be integrations into all of the different girders, these different enterprise tools that we support. I'm showing an example set up here, but again, we have multiple girders, and you can check out the Champion website to see what that is. Notice I drew these bi-directional. The reason we call them a girder and not what ServiceNow would say is a spoke, because we feel we put a little more effort into these and they can do a little bit more. We got that bi-directional capabilities. We're pulling augmented data that you wouldn't find in most vendor implementations or what you get out of the box with the discovery tool. We're getting a lot more data to populate and keep accurate that CMDB. And then from the service now side, basically we have a much easier picture because when that data gets consumed by eBridge, we're leveraging that mid server and still working directly with service now. So nothing has to change on that side. So this is a much prettier picture. It's easier to manage going forward and maintain. So we talked about what a girder is. I want to talk about this for a minute. So the easy part going into ServiceNow is to understand that the girders from Champion are what ServiceNow would call a scoped app. So it's very important to point that out because a scoped application is certified from ServiceNow and it's guaranteed that we're not going to cause any problems on the ServiceNow side. And as ServiceNow moves from London to Madrid and it keeps going in your environment, the girders that we created are going to continue to work because of the way that they were developed. And a scoped app to us, as eBridge apps are ServiceNow scoped apps, when we talk about eBridge apps, they are equaling those girders. So again, if I mention girders, we hear that in our documentation in the videos, it is a ServiceNow scoped application. So just keep that in mind. So let's go a little bit further. What exactly is a girder? So again, we look at the, our girders is going a little bit beyond what ServiceNow spokes do today. Uh, they do have some good flexibility. They do do the discovery. There are some great features out of it, but our girders offer that bi-directional capability. And at the end of the day, because we have bi-directional, we also build intelligence into inside of our girders because we are also subject matter experts for the various enterprise management tools that we're creating these girders for. For example, SACM, SCOM, QRadar, Big Fix, Extra Hop, so forth. These girders are full stack solutions and now I can leverage these to use business rules to trigger actions from the ServiceNow platform in my workflows to create actions going backwards into my enterprise applications. So a big fix girder that we show here, for example, and we're giving you an example of what this looks like inside of ServiceNow, we have a very rigid format that we're following because they are scoped apps from a development standpoint. And we can see what this would look like in ServiceNow. It is a complete application inside of the ServiceNow platform. So, and basically what we're able to do here with the big fix girder, and again, if you have another tool like SACM or Altiris or Tanium or so forth, the same concept exists, that we're getting unmatched asset discovery and automation out of our girder instead of using the spokes. I think it's a good time that we pause this and we jump into a whiteboarding scenario so we can visualize what we were just talking about. All right, so let's start back from the beginning. Let's see if we can uh, erase this piece of our whiteboard real quick so we can keep moving along. So as we just said, we're going to animate that step. So let's draw that we have a bunch of servers out here. They're going to be different kinds, Linux, Max, Windows, servers-based systems. Um, times by thousands in your environment. And these machines will be talking to some type of endpoint management solution. Whether that's been big fix or not, it's kind of the girder we're looking at, but this again could be Altiris or SCOM or some of the other things. And these devices, you know, are going to report into that box for patch management purposes in this example that we're talking about. Now, in a normal workflow, we're going to draw our ServiceNow installation that we have running out here. And we have to get our operator now. So where's Tom? Tom, where are you? Oh, hey, thank you for coming into work today. So at this point, Tom is going to go through the process of creating the work request that we know Tom said. What's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. We need to put in your view into your patching environment. You happy now? Excellent. Let's keep going. So at this point, Tom's still not done yet because he has to turn his attention into his patch management system, write up a patching report. Then he has to submit that into ServiceNow, get that processed in as a request into ServiceNow, 
and then wait for the answer. Usually what we're going to end up doing is attending the CAB meeting. Uh, we've got a CAB meeting there. Tom, don't want to miss it. Tom's usually sad at this sense because his boss, Drew, is going to be there. Um, doesn't make Tom very happy, but Tom's still going to attend the CAB meeting because he's a good guy. Luckily for Tom, he knows Drew likes donuts, so he always brings some, which makes Drew usually approve his cab request, so that will in turn make Tom happy so he can get the work done. Be happy, Tom. Thank you, buddy. Logs back into service now, validates the service request, and then he can actually log on to his system to perform his work. So there's a lot of manual steps here in this process, as you'll see. Now, what would be the difference if Big Fix was actually inside of here? Actually, I meant to say eBridge. Well, if we actually had the eBridge, there was a possibility that we could bridge these applications. Maybe we wouldn't need Tom so much. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. So if we could bridge these applications and they had constant communication between the two of them, keeping the CMDB up to date with the change management, what other things could we do, especially if this was bi-directional? <clears throat> well, your endpoint management solution, say after a patch Tuesday, would know the patches that had to be deployed it could automatically create the baseline, could automatically create a request into ServiceNow over the bridge, which would make our request ticket into ServiceNow for the cab meeting. And if that actually got approved, then the ServiceNow system could bi-directionally over the bridge call back the endpoint management system and the patching process could actually continue. This is one example of the automation workflow. And we wouldn't necessarily need Tom so much. Speaking of, where is Tom? You know what? Tom's worked hard. Let's give him a break. Let's give him some cool place that he can go to, I think. So let's get rid of this stuff. He doesn't need to be at work anymore. And I think we should find him a cool place to hang out. And there's our buddy Tom at the beach. And he's happy now. And he'll stay that way as long as he doesn't have to go back to work or get called by. Oh, no. Here's Drew. Okay, let's just get back to and finish up the presentation for another 60 seconds. Here we're just throwing up some of the default pages that it would look like. We notice here for every girder, we have a summary page at the top, a home page that shows the information coming in, gives us kind of a health status, not only of the information, but the application itself based on that metric data. So we have a single plane of glass to go kind of look at are the monitor of monitors, if you will, to make sure your enterprise applications are behaving as well. So the eBridge integrates like no one else from this standpoint. And again, looking at the Big Fix application, we can see that we can look at all the computers in the environment. We know the users that are on them. We know the software that's installed on them. So from a CI standpoint, from that change management database, we have integration like no one else using these girders and using our methodology with the eBridge solution at a much lower cost, by the way.